Today on DNN, I am interviewing Farhat Parlak, the CEO of Awesome New York. Thank you for being with us today. Thank you so much for having me. What was the beginning of your de of your design journey? Like how, where did it all start? I think it started when uh, I moved to the uh, States about 11 years ago. Okay. And um, I was always interested in design. However, uh, you know, once you move to the United States, especially being in New York, you have, uh, you're exposed to a lot of uh, resources. Yeah. Unlike where you know, coming from, uh, which is Istanbul, Turkey, especially back then, uh, mm -hmm. 10, 11 years ago, it was really limited. And um, being here actually helped me get started uh, my journey in design, I can say. Yeah, so did you study design originally in Istanbul and then you decide I have to go to New York City? Or? I actually didn't study design at all. Okay. I studied business, entrepreneurship, but I always have interest in design and I self taught myself how to become a designer. That actually helped me a lot in terms of uh, launching my company too because I taught myself how to design. Mm -hmm. It very, has very similarities in terms of launching a company because if you're doing things from scratch, uh, you get used to it in different forms, you know, yeah. learning or launching a company or doing something else. So I had, I had that experience, uh, so I apply that in, in the company as well. Awesome. So walk us back, so when did you start Awesome? When did that whole crazy experience begin? I started about two and a half years ago. After failing my own startup, uh, <laughs> what was that? If you want to talk about it, sure. It, it was a website called DogAmigo.com. It was a, a social networking website for dog owners where you could find um, other potential, uh, not potential. Oh, you would find other dog owners to to meet up and and do other activities such as you know, walk talking or and so on. And you can also find other dog owners to you know. Uh, dog sit your dog when okay. you're out of state and so on. So it was a platform to connect with, with each other. However, uh, my partner bailed on me mm. uh, and uh, things didn't work out as, as planned. And then after that journey, I've learned a lot how to become an entrepreneur and how to launch a startup and fail. And that gives you a lot of street credits. <laughs> and uh, I took that experience and then started awesome because I realized there is a big need for uh, design talent uh, for startups, especially when you're launching a startup, um, you need uh, someone to walk you through because you're, if you're a first-time entrepreneur, there are a lot of things you're uh, going to be missing a lot because you don't know most of the process. Yeah. So I believe nine out of ten st uh, startups fail, uh, it's because they fail because of uh, they don't know the execution. Mm -hmm. So I started uh, Awesome for that purpose to help entrepreneurs. Uh, with hands-on, uh, you know, process where we not just provide design services, we also write their business plans. We also go to their uh, investor pitches. Oh, wow. uh, these are other services we provide. Actually, those are services that we do not charge because that's what we believe uh, we are contributing to to our clients and you know the startup ecosystem by helping other uh, entrepreneurs to to become successful. So these are our services. On top of you know the providing design services, that makes us different than any other agency. So I started with that vision to help entrepreneurs. Then it's a design agency. Gotcha. So, yeah. Okay. So how did you really ingrain yourself into the startup uh, community here in New York City? Was it because you'd done Dog Amigo and that kind of like gave you a little bit of a connections, or did you just like? Absolutely. That startup failing that startup, uh, you know taught me a lot and that's how I was able to be embedded mm -hmm. to the community because you had to go to a lot of events, you have to follow a lot of uh, other startup founders because as an you know, entrepreneur you're going through this emotional roller coaster, one day you're so motivated and excited and then you know you you know because you read another success story yeah. and you know why you read it because you're interested and so on and you constantly want to feed yourself that leads you to uh, you know learn and be connected with other uh, people in, in the community and that's how you get into it because you're passionate about it mm -hmm. and you push yourself to to uh, find those kind of stuff yeah okay. so okay. that's that's how it is I think you know you have to a little bit uh, be passionate and everything you know falls apart together and you, yeah. you become really well connected in the industry. So for you, where did that passion kind of just come from? Because I don't, like, did it one day, like, I'm going to be a designer, or yeah. was it, like, where, where, where did that passion just come from? I'll think, I think it, it's uh, a different explanation. A lot of people would say different reasons, but for me, 
I, as I mentioned, I moved here as an uh, immigrant, uh, and I didn't speak any English. And I know up to date, I'm still not perfect with that, you know, because I wasn't born here, so you're never gonna be perfect with with, your, with the language that you learn later mm -hmm. on. You know, my native language is Turkish. I'm really good at it, but. When it comes to English, it doesn't matter. I think 30 years down the line, I'll be the same. So that leads me to be able to uh, not be able to express myself well because it doesn't matter how long you live here. So I choose uh, design to express that, like mm -hmm. because as in as in um, second um, you know language, as your English is, you look at things more simple format okay. and simpler approaches because your vocabulary is limited. <laughs> so so I see it as a very different way because. You're limited. You're you're already limited with the vocabulary. Therefore, you can only explain certain things in a very simple, naive way. Mm -hmm. It's actually really good with design because people make things really complicated when it comes to design because they have a lot of ideas. They really sometimes too much knowledge and too much information is not good. Mm -hmm. So I'm kind of like glad that I'm, you know, wasn't born here and came here mm -hmm. and adapted and I can see the both sides. Yeah. So I think the reason I wanted to become a designer because I realized that's the key to become a good designer. You don't have to make things complicated. You can look at things in a simple way, just like how I'm able to express myself in English is simple, and then I can translate that into designs and my creative direction. So the things we're producing are simple to use, user-friendly, because of that, I think, reason. So that's why I choose to be a designer. So you mentioned a little bit like how you, you self-taught yourself design. You know, how did you do that? Did you just learn entirely online? Did you take courses, or did you just buy a whole bunch of books? Uh, well, yeah, 11 years ago when I moved, I was going to Barnes and Nobles a lot, and I was learning all about how to use you know, the programs and so on. That's one thing. I think talent, you know, design skill comes uh, with you. Like if mm -hmm. when you're born, uh, I don't think it's you have to have an eye for it. You can improve it, but you have to have an eye for that. That it is something you cannot teach uh, mm -hmm. yourself or learn from school or book. Uh, but however, you have to perfect that talent with using the right tools and so on. So technical side of it, yes, I read a lot of books, uh, took a lot of online classes, mm -hmm. uh, I never took uh, you know, actual course or class in college or, mm -hmm. or, or extra, you know, like general yeah. assembly now, uh, none of those, but everything else was mostly Barnes and Nobles back then, I would go to there, get Starbucks, read it and go back to my computer and apply, actually not having the com you know, information in front of you while you're doing it yeah. is really actually effective okay. because that because I couldn't afford to buy the book so I had to keep it so it's kind of constantly more uh, adaptable uh, because now you have to apply it's not there the instructions are not there so you have to be really forcing yourself that leads you to make more mistakes but more mistakes teaches you have to be a good designer with those tools so now nowadays you have everything on, in front of you mm -hmm. you kind of just have to apply and then it kind of leads more lazy approach, I, I assume. I mean, I, I think I think it's better to like I think read it and then go try and make mistakes. Yeah, uh, a lot of people not uh, approaching that way. Well, yeah, like in my experience, some of the best designs I've made have been mistakes. Like I've been trying to do it in one direction, then I like mess it up some way, yeah. and then it turns out to be like that was the best thing I ever did for that project. Absolutely, absolutely. That same thing in life, not just being a designer. I think mm -hmm. same as being an entrepreneur. Like I failed. Look at me. Go and I started awesome for that reason. You know, you might make mistakes in this design project, and when it, when another similar project comes in, you're more experienced. Yeah, uh, it's important to learn from that and then go forward. Yeah. Awesome. awesome. So, if someone was coming from another country, pretty much the same journey that that you were doing, that you did. You know, what would you recommend that, that they do? Go to Barnes and Noble, or should they go to General Assembly, or something along those lines? Yeah, things change. Obviously, yeah. every every year there's something new. Uh, not every year, maybe every month. Uh, <laughs> Um, it's a you know ongoing um, industry, and I mean the only advice I would give is being passionate, uh, and then whatever the resources are available uh, for that uh, you know time, you know 10, 11, 20 years ago things are different, and 20 years down the line things are going to be different. So whatever I'm gonna say is not gonna apply mm -hmm. it's for for anyone who's gonna watch this video next month. <laughs> uh, but I would say for today to go uh, obviously go to general assembly, take online classes. Actually, one of our um, clients, uh, Udemy, Udemy.com, they have great uh, online classes to learn design, um, and and you know there's similar websites as well, but you know not just don't limit yourself to one resource. Definitely uh, try different avenues. That's important because one learning technique may not be enough. 
uh, or or will may not improve your skill set. I think it's great to do more like you know online interactive, but like actual physical class, taking it and meeting other designers because it's not just about learning something. It's about seeing other people, exchanging information. It's about vision. Mm -hmm. right? You can always learn a tool. It's a technical yeah. thing. You spend you know there's a rule you know if you spend six to seven hours on anything you you know well it depends like for language there's formula, if yeah. you spend this much time you can learn that language and if you spend this much time, you know, I'm making this number up but like if you spend 60, 70 hours and using, you know, this Photoshop, you'll you learn it. Yeah. But then what if you don't have the vision and the talent? So how do you get that is I think being inspired and looking at other people's work. Okay. That will never change. So I would say the biggest, biggest advice that it will never change and it will be still viable yeah. in the next decade will be looking at other people's works, be inspired, maybe even contacting them. Like mm -hmm. designers are really... Um, Transparent people, uh, they yeah. love to help other people out. Unlike other, you know, industries, people, you know, so different industries, you know, uh, they don't like one another. But designers are really, really helpful. So if you even contact this designer you admire, uh, they might just, you know, like get back to you and answer your questions. And that, those are those questions that you ask. The answers will be really valuable than a book or a class. Yeah. So. so where do you draw a lot of your inspiration from? Because you know it's web and mobile technology. It's changing so rapidly. Do you look towards film? Do you look towards like older styles of art? Like where do you kind of pull from when you're building the new, uh, the new UIs for these new startups? Well, it's not you know anymore about our vision and direction as much. I mean, it is health, but also our clients nowadays are coming up with uh, a lot of um, directions as well because they're also educated, educating themselves on design. So you know. You know, when we started two and a half years ago, three years ago, the clients didn't know anything about UI UX means. Mm -hmm. Now they come up with balsamic mockups, thanks to like other tools. They yeah. put them together mockups. You know, they they know a lot of websites they can get inspirations from and then put together what they are looking for. Mm -hmm. So if you're working on a project, the client is providing you a lot of information, then you kind of have to follow that because you want to go with what client your client wants. Yeah. But if we're not working on a client project, or if you're free to do whatever you want in terms of creative approach, then uh, I look at uh, a lot of uh, the other designs on dribble.com mm -hmm. uh, or look at similar products most of, mostly. If you're designing a UI, you need to understand the competitor of that product mm -hmm. in the same market. Similar, same with the UX. Uh, you don't want to reinvent the wheel because and consumers in that market already used to that user experience. Mm -hmm. What you want to do is introduce a better UI and better features. Mm -hmm. But user experience, let's say you're building a social networking app, you know, Path and Facebook, these are very similar user experiences. Yeah. Actually, they see from one another and adapt, and that is very normal nowadays. You used yeah. to be like, oh, you stole from us, you will get a lot of like, you know, uh, you know, a lot of bad press. Bad press, but now like yeah. a lot of, you know, pre, you know, Pat does a great UX, and then Facebook sees this and applies it, and they're like, okay, you know, it's fine. Yeah. Um, so it's okay to do that. That's what I'm trying to explain. So uh, I think um, when we're designing, we are looking at uh, those kind of stuff. Uh, uh, personally, I look at what's out there, and then be inspired from you know mixing that with other stuff. Okay. So that's how I approach usually. This question is more for students who are currently in school, either they're at Syracuse, they're at RISD, or they're in some art program, or just a college student. Where do you recommend that they go to catch up to where the industry is, or to understand, you know, this industry is at X, Y, and Z, even though you're learning about A, B, and C? Mm -hmm. um, if they're going after a startup industry, which I you know, highly recommend and advise them, because there's a big need for good designers in the startup industry, and I will advise them to go to startup events. If you're looking to find a job or connect, be connected with other people, th that's where you're gonna go. Uh, there are a lot of uh, websites where they list a lot of events, uh, and, and there are a lot of mailing lists. I would advise them to sign up and go and meet people, uh, because when they graduate, they might find the next job. Uh, in terms of learning about that industry, again, these events have a lot of information. You know, as a designer, you again might have a talent, might, not, might have a technical skill, something like such as using the, the Photoshop and all that. But then, understanding the industry is something else. How do you do that? Is I think going to uh, if this is again for an example for startup industry because this is the industry we're in. I can speak on behalf. Yeah. Will be going to to a lot of startup events, talking to a lot of entrepreneurs, startup founders and understand their vision, what they're looking for when designing a product. So if they're teaching, you know, XYZ in school, you can understand ABC because, uh, you know, you have to know the ABC, not the XYZ. Yeah, yeah. You're going to use the XYZ as a foundation, but there's always, doesn't matter if you're a designer or not, even you're studying finance, you're going to go to Wall Street and they're going to train you. No matter what, whatever you're going to learn in school is not going to be, 
as you know valuable as you think, uh, <laughs> unfortunately, because uh, you will be trained at the end. Mm -hmm. um, doesn't matter what industry you're entering, they're going to train you. Uh, so if you're fresh out of college, obviously, yeah. unless you have experience. So if, you, if you're graduating from first time in college, keep in mind that you're going to be trained. Whatever you're going to learn will be just a foundation. It's all about uh, learning new things. So if they start this process as quick as possible, learning about their industry, going to events, meeting people, reading about, uh, you know, there's a lot of websites and resources. They can at, at least be ready to what they expect. So they don't be you know, surprised and, and, you know, don't have any problems while they start working on these. So a lot of these, a lot of the programs are programs that create very extensive and large physical books as their portfolios at the end of their graduating year. You know, what is your thought on that? Or when you're looking for new designers or new people to join your team, would you rather see a physical book or like a digital portfolio? I mean, physical book is great. It showcases uh, your work really well uh, mm -hmm. because the print quality and all that. However, it's not efficient uh, because if you're using that as a tool to find a job and showcase it to, to someone really important that might uh, be uh, you know, the decision maker for your next job, that person could be sitting at a bar uh, next to you and you don't carry your book all the time. Mm -hmm. uh, yes, there are websites like Behance, there are websites like um, uh, you know, uh, Dribble and so on to showcase your work, but I think my advice would be you know, having these work on your, let's say you have an iPhone or smartphone or mini iPad mini on your uh, on your device, not mm -hmm. like on Behance because, you know, you meet this person is like, oh, can I show you my work? Let me go to Behance and find my portfolio, blah, blah, yeah. blah. You know, there might be no connection and location you, you, you're you trying to show, no signal and you won't be able to show. I say, instead of a book, definitely uh, embed them in your, in your device. Mm -hmm. So it's offline, uh, you know, you can showcase it offline. Yeah. And it's also, you know, it's quickly, you know, if you can, if you want, I can email this to you versus take my book. Who's going to carry that book? Or who's yeah. going to, you know, even like business cards are like being outdated, you know, yeah. and you have a business card, it's not. It's about the work you do and, and people, you know, seeing that work. Uh, so I would advise them to, to definitely carry an iPad mini or, or if they have a smartphone, put it in their um, devices. I know this is a little small, but iPad mini is perfect for that. And I okay. bought an iPad mini just for that. Really? A regular iPad, I'm like, you know what, I cannot carry this to an event. I have it and then, you know, in winter time, you have usually in inside pocket, just put it there and then pull <laughs> it out. Perfect size, it's, it's great quality too, you know, you can show your, showcase your work much, much better. Uh, and, and, yeah, the beautiful red display, yeah. all of, it just makes life so much easier. You can email the person, your portfolio directly. There are a lot of benefits, and it's most importantly, it's efficient uh, yeah. and accessible. That's my point, more okay. than anything else. Because it's about like being in the right time, right place, showing your yeah. work, here's my information, thank you, and then you might get an email. Mm -hmm. And that, this is what I would approach it. Someone who can show me their work if I'm having a conversation. If I really like their work, I'll be like, wow, you know, this is really good, versus that person not carrying their book, the chances are really low. Gotcha. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. What is the one thing you wish you knew when you first started off? Mm, that's a good question. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, mm, I would say I knew how to run the business better because, you know, being a designer is something and running a business completely different mindsets. Yeah. Uh, the biggest challenge is how do you switch this on and off, like constantly during the day, like, you know, right now I'm talking to you as a designer, but if you ask me a question related to the industry, I'm thinking from a business perspective. But that's totally different personalities and approaches. Mm -hmm. So I wish I knew how to do the business more because design, again, you're born with it, you can learn, you can perfect it. But like business, I think it's a lot about extra. You cannot learn in school, even though I went to business. Like whatever I learned in school, there's nothing I'm applying today, unfortunately. Really? I mean, they're basic things, but you you know these things in, in high school too. Like these are not really valuable information that you know. Wow, because of this information, I made this much money. Like okay. I'm very like driven person, effective. Like I'm looking to the result type of person. So mm -hmm. if I'm not really applying what I'm learning in school, what I learn in school, to my day-to-day -day operations, it's you know because school is very traditional, and mm -hmm. especially if you're dealing with startups, startups. Are opposite of tradition, the corporate America. Yeah. Because school and business schools in, in the country, in the states, teaches you about the corporate version. Yeah, yeah. Right of business and startups are opposite. Whatever company cultures, there's no company culture, you know, in the corporate uh, America. Everything is tie and suit and do this, do that. Mm -hmm. HR departments, there are no departments in startups, and there's there's a huge culture that's different, you know, very uh, 
friendly and interactive and encourages people. So I wish I knew that because what I learned in school was all traditional approach yeah. business. So I wish I learned uh, more about, like, I knew more about, like, the business side of it. Well, the interesting thing is that there are programs, like Syracuse, for example, has an entrepreneurship major inside the business school as, like, a part of it. And it's kind of, like you said, they have the traditional mindset, but they're trying to apply it to this really new age idea. Because of this re exact reason, you know, some schools have it, you know. Um, mm -hmm. I mean, there are a lot of, I think NYU has it now. Now I'm at the Baruch is a great business school, mm -hmm. uh, one of the top uh, entrepreneurship programs in the country. And um, I mean, those are still traditional. So, uh, but they're doing, you know, they're moving forward at least. That's a great thing. But yeah. I think, uh, you know, uh, it was too late. I've you already graduated. So yeah, yeah, it's, it's a, little, a little, a little too late. But yeah, for next generations, it will be better, hopefully. Mm -hmm. I recently read Kern and Burn, which is a book with a whole bunch of interviews with design entrepreneurs. Where they talk about, you know, what they did, where they came from. So, do you think that writing has like really been become more important to the design community? Um, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely, yeah. I mean, I've learned so much from reading other people's experiences. Mm -hmm. uh, especially now I take it more seriously, because now, you know, I'm not a newbie. When I started uh, two and a half years ago, I was a newbie, uh, because before that I was just freelancing. It's not really approaching from a business perspective, but now I'm reading other business uh, owners and startup founders and their mistakes. They write it, they put it together in a great, great articles and books and so on, in magazines. I've learned so much, I learned so much and um, I was reading an article about actually uh, you should approach your business uh, as how you would sell it. Uh, mm -hmm. If you are designing your business around that you will sell it eventually, you will always look at it from a buyer's perspective uh, and you will see all the, uh, the, the flaws okay. the, and the negative parts, uh, pros and cons and then you will focus on those cons and, and your flaws your business, like what is your weakness? Because yeah. you're gonna sell it, and when you're selling it, they're gonna be questioning these yeah. things. You cannot sell it without de fixing these problems, and it makes you build a better business. Yeah. I mean, no, you're not gonna sell it, but have an attitude for that. And that's just one thing I've learned. Now I'm looking, like I read that, and now I'm seeing it from that perspective. So it has a great impact, and that is one tiny bit example that could be changing a lot of people's lives, and, mm -hmm. and you know, helping other people see uh, different things. Awesome. So would you recommend that? you know, young entrepreneurs or young designers just consume a whole bunch? Should they be like consuming and writing at the same time? Um, can I elaborate? Like, what's, what do you mean by that? Exactly? Well, like, like, should they be, should, should like a young designer or a young entrepreneur be just reading and then like working on their side project? Or should they be like reading and writing and working on a side project? Just kind of be like, here's the in inbound, here's the outbound, here's what I'm taking from here learning from what I'm doing and this is what it looks like. I think, yeah, doing reading, learning, and doing applying at the same time is important because you mm -hmm. got to do it right away to see the results and you're like, oh, okay, maybe you're reading the wrong things. Yeah, yeah. Maybe this is not for you. So if you read it, read it, and then do it, and then what if you read it for months and years and you learn something and then you apply it for another year to see if it's, it's a result that is two years versus doing it at the same time. It will, it's more difficult, obviously, because you're putting more effort. Uh, but, you know, you should, whatever you get, I think uh, you should balance and put it out there to, to see if it works or not. Okay. Uh, that's to validate your ideas right away and your vision and your direction, your strategy, everything. Uh, you know, otherwise you might be wasting your time because yeah. longer it takes to apply. Yes, you gotta build all this thing, but that doesn't mean anything. Building a lot of information again, too much knowledge is a, sometimes is not good. Mm -hmm. You know, I've seen you know this is maybe a little bit personal example, but like some of my friends who are not like I don't want to say um, really uh, knowledgeable on certain things, but the ones that least, like they have the more courage to do more things. Okay. I observed this from a few of my friends, and I admire them because they don't know they just, you know, blindly just go and do it because they believe, you know, just, like, whatever they, they think. And yeah, that is that is great, and they are based on their experiences by making mistakes. And mm -hmm. versus someone with more attitude, like oh, I know a lot of stuff. I'm gonna learn and go to you know do this, do that, read this, go to this school, and then. I'm, it's that's a traditional model again. It doesn't work, you know. I think going out there and then straight doing it and making mistakes without knowing a lot of stuff or that regardless is better. Okay, awesome. When designers first started coming out of school, or at least what I what my program talks to me about is that you just go straight into an agency or you go into freelance eventually. So is there like a, a third path now where it's like agency, freelance, startups, or is there more than that, or is it just uh, or starting your own agency. 
Okay, so there's four now. <laughs> there's four now. Uh, there are more. I mean, you can come yeah. up with, you know, depending on what industry, you know, startup is for startup industry. Yeah. Um, and I think it's important to to know what you want first. Are you a type of person you, who wants to work for an agency, uh, which has uh, different approaches, like a bigger team, uh, bigger projects, bigger clients, and so on. Uh, startups, on the other hand, small teams, innovative products, uh, more faster approach, uh, more lean approach and so on. Starting your own is uh, risk, but uh, flexibility, you don't have to work for anybody. And you find your own clients, the challenges are how you find projects and so on. And so if you think you're well connected, you can find clients, and again, that's why I advise them to go to an event and mm -hmm. build your network. If you're going to pursue starting your own agency or your own company, uh, you know, you want to be really well connected, and so that's why you should invest in you mm -hmm. uh, in that direction. If you're going to do an agency, invest in that direction, make a lot of connections through LinkedIn and events yeah. again for agency people. So when you uh, graduate, you can have someone who can set up an interview for you, uh, working for a startup. Uh, if you want to work for a startup, uh, the other option is then find a lot of startup founders eventually they'll, you know, when you graduate. So I think know what you want and then invest in you at a year and a half. Uh, in advance, mm -hmm. and then once you graduate, you'll be good to go. Okay. Yeah. Cool. But uh, to answer your question, maybe the direct answer, but I mean, yeah, there are options. So, whatever you're gonna do, if there is a different alternative that uh, we didn't list in this video, uh, you can obviously, you know, um, apply the same approach like yeah. find it and then do something about it at least a year before. So, once you graduate, you you know, you can easily uh, you know, get into it. Nice, that's great advice. Um, there appears to be a surge of designers, like you were talking about, who are joining startups or joining new ventures, but there are also some that are just creating their own companies like on their own. You know, what are your thoughts on that? Just designers creating their own businesses, whether they're you know UI UX agencies, but even just you know creating their own like hundred dollar apps. Right, right. Um, what are my thoughts? Is okay, okay. I think it's important because as a designer, you have this talent. And you must leverage mm -hmm. uh, either, you know, again, just like you said, either starting your agency or starting your own actual startup, uh, not as an agency startup, but like a product based yeah. startup. Like you want to build, you know, you have this great idea for for an uh, app, and I think you should be like understand how to be an entrepreneur and improve your that, that skills on that level, and and um, maybe start, uh, you know, uh, designing an app, and, and that costs you nothing because yeah. it's you. People pay you to do this, so <laughs> you have this talent, and you should maybe start a product-based startup as well as a designer. Mm -hmm. That will have a great value because you have you're going to have a design culture in your company. A lot of startup founders are not designers. Yeah. I mean, there are great examples such as like Airbnb, Etsy, uh, Foursquare. These are the companies that founded by um, designer founders. Mm -hmm. uh, as a great result, uh, maybe you can be the next you know Airbnb or Foursquare or Yelp mm -hmm. uh, or Etsy. Where you focus on design because you know you, your approach will be always the consumer because yeah. designers always think about the consumer perspective. On the other hand, there are a lot of technical co-founders and a lot of marketing going towards how to learn how to be a coder. But how about a designer? You know, I believe if you're technical, you're never gonna think from the consumer perspective. Mm. You're going to think from the technical perspective, and technical co-founders, 95% of, of the industry is you know startups funded by technical co-founders, not all of them, but the ones are, yeah. and only five percent. Of them, like I would say, designer founders and designer founders are the ones actually thinking about the consumer, not the technical co-founder. So I don't know yeah. why people are really going crazy to find that you know partner who is a technical co-founder, although they should be actually looking for a designer co-founder. So for those people, there are a lot of uh, you know alternatives and uh, opportunities. Maybe you can team up with a great technical co-founder yeah. as a designer founder and build a great product. Yeah. That is the ultimate, I think, excellent uh, combination. Then. It's everything easy. He know he knows how to code. He knows how to design well. That's you know match. You know, match made in heaven. Match made in heaven. Exactly. Thank you for watching our interview with Farat Parlak, the CEO of Awesome New York. It was a pleasure. Thank you for having me. Thank you for being here too. I really appreciate you taking the time. Thank you.